Hello and welcome to our second video on circles and circle theorems. I'm Mr. Chowdhury and today we're going to be looking at a angle facts recap. Now, if you do not remember any of your angle facts, I suggest you go and watch our playlist on angle facts and watch all of our videos on the individual angle facts to help you refresh your memory. This video is more of a recap, so it's if you have an idea of what the angle facts are but just need a very quick reminder this is the video you need to watch if you are struggling and you think oh I don't remember anything about angle facts I suggest you go and watch those individual videos to help more than this video will this one is just a very brief recap of angle facts so before we do anything here are some diagrams here are some diagrams so I've got a quarter turn a half turn three quarters of a turn and full turn what I'd like you to do is your first task what I'd like you to do is your first task is pause the video and tell me what would one and a half turns be? How many degrees would one and a half turns be? What would the answer be to that? Please pause the video and have a go at that question, please. Okay, so one and a half turns. So we know one turn is 360 degrees. We know half a turn is 180 degrees. So if I want to do one and a half turns, I need to add 360 to 180 and I get 540. So one and a half turns is 540 degrees. We can use this information to work out any value of any turns. The most important one for this lesson is going to be what one half a turn is and what one full turn is. Those are the two we're going to use the most. So now let's look at our first angle rules. Our first angle rules are this. In if a full turn is 360 degrees, then angles around a point must sum to 360 degrees. So here we can see we have our point in the middle and we have lines that come off it. The angles around that point sum to 360 degrees. And I know that if one half a turn is 180 degrees, then angles around a point, there's my point there, on a straight line, and there's my straight line there, must sum to 180 degrees. And this is the two first angle facts. Very straightforward, very simple. You probably already knew these. Okay, now let's do a reminder of our next angle points, which is when two straight lines cross as a point, the opposite angles are going to be equal. So what does that mean? So here we have two straight lines that cross at a point. Here we have two straight lines that cross at a point. Now we're saying the opposite angles are equal. So I'm going to draw in all of the angles there and color code them. So we can see the two blue angles are opposite each other and they are equal. The two orange angles are opposite each other and they are equal. Now, how would I say this using algebra? So here's the same diagram. What can we say? Well, we can say that A is equal to C and B is equal to D. I'd like you to pause the video and using the three angle rules we already know, what else can you tell me about these? What other angle facts can you come up with with the algebra? What else can you say? Pause the video, have a go. Okay, let's have a look at what else we can say. Well, I can say that A plus B is equal to 100 degrees because A and B are around a point on a straight line. I could also say that C and D sum to 180 degrees. I could say A and D sum to 180 degrees. I could say B and C sum to 180 degrees. But I can also say that A, B, C, D sum to 360 degrees because they are around a point. Okay, so let's have a look at this next key point. So corresponding angles on parallel lines are equal. So now we need to understand what corresponding angles are. Well, here's a diagram of corresponding angles. We can see the following things. We can see we have two parallel lines denoted by the lines with the arrows on them. We have a transversal that goes through both of these parallel lines. We have one interior angle to the parallel lines and one exterior angle to the parallel lines. And they are both on the same side as the transversal, they are above the transversal, both angles are. Let's have a look at another diagram. Let's have a think, does this fit our definition of corresponding angles? Well, we have two parallel lines. We have a set of parallel lines. We have a transversal that goes through them. We have a transversal that goes through them. We have one angle that is interior. We have an angle that is interior to the parallel lines. We have an angle that is exterior to the parallel lines. And also, they are on the same side as the transversal. Here's another one. Does it follow the same pattern? Parallel lines, yes. Transversal, yes. On um, interior and exterior, yes. Both on the same side as the transversal, yes they are. 
and our last one follows the same pattern. Now we could rotate these parallel lines in any way, but the angles that were corresponding would still say corresponding. Now we have another angle rule. Alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. So alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. So we need to understand what alternate angles are. So here's a diagram of some alternate angles. Here's a diagram of some alternate angles. And we need to decide what the rules are to make an alternate angle. So let's have a look at these and we'll come up with our rules. Well, we can see that they are both inside the parallel lines. So we're inside the parallel lines. The second thing is we have one on one side of the of the transversal and one on the other side of the transversal. Okay, so let's have a look at the next diagram. So they are both interior to the parallel lines. We have one on one side of the transversal, one on the other side of the transversal. So they are alternate. We can see interior to the parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Here's our next one. Are they interior to the parallel lines? Well, yes, they are. They're both inside the parallel lines. Are they on opposite sides of the transversal? Yes, they are. So they are alternate. And our last one follows the same pattern again. And the last one we need to look at is co-interior angles uh, on parallel lines are equal. So what makes an angle co-interior? So if we have a look here in our diagram, co-interior angles are both interior to the parallel lines, hence the word co-interior. They are on the same side of the transversal and we can see that they sum to 180. So here they are again, interior to the parallel lines on the same side of the transversal, interior to the parallel lines on the same side of the transversal, interior to the parallel line on the same side of the transversal. Now here is what I would like you to do now. So make a rough copy of this diagram in your books or on paper or wherever you're doing this. And I'd like you to firstly do this. Take some coloured pencils or a highlighter and on your diagram highlight all the angles that are equal. Highlight them in the same colour. So if you think two angles are the same, highlight them in like purple. Two angles are the same, highlight them in blue, whatever you want. Then if you've done that and you are happy, then you need to write down the size of each of these angles. So write down the value of all of the angles in this diagram. And if you have done that and you are happy, what I'd like you to do is using the diagram, write a sentence to explain why angles A and B are not related and try and use as much maths terminology as you can. So pause the video, have a go at that, and I'll come back with the answers in a second. Okay, so we're going to go through each of these questions and tell you what the answer is. So for the red task, the red task, just highlighting the ones that are the same. We have all of the purple angles are equal. All of the orange angles are equal. All of the blue angles are equal. And all of the pink angles are equal. Our next task was to say which ones were the same value. So all of the purple angles would be 120 degrees because we knew that from our diagram. All of the pink angles would be 50 degrees because we knew that from our diagram. And we can see that because the orange angle and the purple angle sum to 180, they must both be 60 degrees. So we've got all of our 60 degree angles here, our 50 degree angles written in. That also means that our blue angles and our pink angles need to add to 180. So our blue angles must be 130. And then we need to write a sentence why A and B are not related. Well, we can see that A was this blue angle and B was this purple angle. Why are they not related? Well, the reason is if we have a look, they look like they are corresponding. Right. They look like they are corresponding. But the reason they are not corresponding is because they are not on parallel lines. If we look at the lines that go through to create A and B, those lines are not parallel. Because they are not on parallel lines or around a point, they have no link between them. There's no link between them through any of the angle rules that we've just learned. A lot of the angle rules that we've learned, so for example, co-interior, corresponding and alternate, are to do with parallel lines. The others are to do with be either being on a straight line or around a point on a straight line and they're not around a point. So they are not in any way linked. So just to wrap up, these are the key points of angle facts. Now you can screen grab this page and have it with you when you're answering questions. If you are still confused, I suggest you go and watch the individual videos to give you a better understanding. But I'm going to go through these key points before we move on. So the first key point is angles around a point sum, they add up to 360. Angles around a point on a straight line sum to 180. Co-interior angles on parallel lines sum to 180. 
opposite angles are equal, corresponding angles on parallel lines are equal, and alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. What I've tried to do is uh, set them up so that you can see the two angle rules that sum to 180 are together, the three angle rules where everything is equal are together, and the one that's 360 is on its own there. So what you need to do is make sure you know these, you understand these, you can apply these in different situations. This is where you would go off and either do Mr. Amerson's questions, or if you're feeling super confident, you go on Dr. Frost and Corbett Maths and practice some questions on there. Hopefully you can go off and be productive. This has been Mr. Chowdhury. I'll see you in the next video.